Hello, I'm Leona Dooley, and this is Ebony, Ivy, and Time, where we work hard, we love God and family, and we know that everything else is just gravy. There is just so much stuff going on in the world and our families today, and what we're going to do is that we're going to help to focus some of that energy back into our families, into loving them, into caring for them, and we are going to do it right here in the kitchen. Now, keep this in mind. It, it's the little things that you do that make a difference. Now, our family loves to eat. You know, your children love to eat. Take the time to prepare meals that you know they're going to enjoy. Now, so we are going to uh, have a very busy week. We've had some unexpected things to happen and um, that's going to take up a couple of days of, of our week that we're gonna be involved in. And so cooking might be to the minimum, uh, but family togetherness, that's what we're gonna do. Now. There are going to be some things uh, that we're going to do that I would consider to be a little time consuming. So you will notice that this week's uh, video is gonna be a little longer than usual. And that's because a couple of days, I did some meals that required more time. Now that's not to say that you have to do that all the time, no. But it does say that occasionally, you might take the time to really put your hand and heart into whatever it is that you're doing. Now, when you're coming home from work, you're just trying to get by. You're just trying to get that meal on the table, get the kids' homework done, get hubby happy, and everybody is set. But you know, when you look at the nightly news, you may start to rethink and think, I need to come home, Take a deep breath and understand you're hitting your second job. That's how I felt. I had a second job. And just like you go into your job with expectations and plans for the things that you're going to do, we have to plan for our families. We have to plan to make things the way we want them to be. You know, when I think back to the past and think back to our moms, you know, some of our moms didn't work, but a lot of our moms did. But you know what? There were certain consistencies that were always there. They were always there to make sure dinner was on the table. You know, timing might be a little different as far as when you ate, but you did it. There were chores. There were, there were you had to make sure homework was done. All of those types of things were done, and most of it was done right here in the kitchen. But you know what? Mom knew the hearts and the minds of everyone who was in her kitchen. And depending on the kitchen, she even had uncles and aunts and neighbors and their kids and whomever who would smell whatever it was that she was cooking, and they were at that table too. So... We became, when my children were little, we were the Kool-Aid house. We had other people's children who were here when it was time for dinner, and I fed them too and sent them home. So thumbs up to the Kool-Aid house because I still stay in touch with those children. It doesn't take but a minute. Make it special for your family. Let's see what we can do this week in our kitchen. April is just around the corner and you can see that I'm already making plans. So let's turn over to March because we're ending the month of March and let's look at some of the things that we've done. I'm trying to get you down to the last week of March and uh, hopefully I can do that without jiggling you too much. All right, I think I have you in a good spot. 
Now, normally, I don't really talk about whatever's going on on Sunday, but, you know, Sunday's typically our dinner with friends. On Monday, we're going to do an herb shrimp. You notice I had the shrimp in, and that's because I knew already that I had um, shrimp and... Uh, so we're going to do an herb shrimp pasta. I have planned for a chicken, but you know, last week I didn't have a chance to uh, do the bean soup. So sometimes this week I'm going to work in that bean soup. And uh, so I'm going to scoot this over so you can see. There it is. So this bean soup is going to be moved to sometime this week. And it may certainly be on Tuesday. I'm just going to have to see what's scheduled. So it will either be chicken or it may be bean soup. On Wednesday, I um, talked with my granddaughter. This On Wednesdays, I take dinner over to their house while their mom is in school. And so I had planned to do a rigatoni with an Italian gravy and then when I went out to the freezer, I saw I had a nice big turkey. So I just said, hey, let's go with the turkey. So on Sunday night, I took the turkey out so it could start to thaw in the refrigerator. I'm going to prepare dressing and some other fixings with that turkey. So the rigatoni will get moved to somewhere else. On Thursday... My plan is to do a beef vegetable soup. I do have some beef in the freezer. So that's the plan, to do a veggie soup. Um, Friday, we're going to have pizza. But I think for lunch, I'm going to need to use up whatever leftover turkey there may be. So I'm planning a turkey salad. On Saturday is a shopping day. So needless to say, before we come home, we're going to eat out. We're going to eat out. So let's see if I can get you over there without too much jiggle. All right. This week I also did some chocolate chip cookies, and I'm planning to take those with me when I go over to the kids' house on Wednesday. So that's a full week of, of cooking, a full week. I'm going to love every moment of it. Now, so that's our plan for this week. So let's see what actually comes about. And uh, I'll take you there. I'm going to kind of give you a little sneak peek at the first week of, of um, April. Let's see if I can get you there. And let's see if I can get you closer. My plan for Monday is to have uh, pork chops, and I'm going to do a sheet pan style pork chops. And you know that rigatoni a tap with the Italian gravy that I didn't do last week? That's going to be this week. Now, on Wednesday and Thursday, guess who is going to be here? I already know. It's going to be the grandkids. So even though I had red beans and rice planned for Wednesday, I can already tell you that's not going to work for them because they don't like red beans and rice. So we may actually switch these two because they do love the rigatoni with the Italian gravy. So I think that's probably going to come over to one of those days. But we'll work it out. It's their spring vacation. And they're going to be here for two days with us. So, you know, what babies want, babies get. So, have a blessed week and enjoy. And remember, we work hard. We love God and our family. And we know that all the chatter and all the other stuff is just gravy. God bless you and have a wonderful week. Tonight, we need a quick meal, and we are going to be cooking a just a seafood pasta dish. I've done several of these, and so I'm going to keep this short and keep it fast, because that's exactly what it's going to be. Probably at least five to eight minutes. I'm going to let it saute. I'll bring you back in just a second. Now, while we're waiting for this to really come to almost a 
a rolling boil, which is kind of what I want. I want about five minutes of a really hard boil. I have my sink full of nice hot soapy water. I am washing all of my dishes so that everything's clean other than this brazier and the bowls that we're going to eat in. So that when dinner is over, it will be a matter of three items to get washed, all the surfaces will be clean, and I'll be ready to sit down and enjoy the evening. You can see that we are at that rolling boil. So I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna take my um, wooden spoon, make sure everything's broken apart, and start to mix. I do not want this, you can see it's trying to stick a little bit on the bottom, and that's because I had it at a pretty high temperature. As long as I keep it at a reasonable temperature, that doesn't usually happen. But if you've ever worked with pasta, you know pasta sticks if you're not careful with it. So I am giving this a good toss. I'm going to taste some of this pasta. I'm going to add just a little more salt, just a little. And guess what? Dinner is served. Just a simple, simple herb. It's very herby, very herbaceous. I'm going to call it an herb pasta shrimp or an herb shrimp pasta. How about that? And uh, sound good? Boy, I wish you could smell it because it's certainly full of basil and oregano and all of those good things that I absolutely love. Dinner is ready. Let's eat. Pasta. Let's see. I know this is going to be delicious. So I'm going to give it a taste. Do a little twirl there. Get some shrimp. And that bite. Let's have Eric. He does not want to leave his group. All right, let's see how it is. Nice and steamy. Mmm. This is good. Really good. So good I can barely talk. I am so hot I can barely talk. I think I need one more bite. Mmm. Guys, I'm going to leave you. And hope that you try this dish. Enjoy. When you look in this pot, you know exactly what I'm having for dinner. We are going to have a bean soup tonight. And I wanted to use up, you know, I told you I'm trying to clean out and use up before dates expire and all those good things. So I have several bean soup recipes that are on the channel and so I decided that I would just kind of take you through this particular one because it's so so quick and so easy. Also this is one that if I had uh, been on my game this morning I would have actually just thrown everything into the crock pot but I wasn't there this morning and later on I'll kind of explain to you why it's been kind of kind of a sad day. We lost a very very good friend and um, um, I just couldn't get moving this morning. So I um, wanted to uh, take the time to uh, just kind of give you some little tidbits. 
So in here, I have three cans of beans. Whatever your choice of beans are, it doesn't matter. You can have them all one kind if you wanted to. I really wanted all pintos, but only had two cans of pintos. Wanted three cans, and so I threw in my last can of white beans, white navy beans. And so I had a little bit of ham left over from Thanksgiving in the freezer. So guess where that went? There it is right there in the pot. So I am going to uh, add the liquid at this point. And uh, this has had a chance to, the, the ham and the onions and the green peppers have had a chance to simmer. I'm going to put in about a tablespoon of salsa and to give it a little extra kick and that little extra taste in the background. I always add about a fourth cup of uh, ketchup to my beans and that kind of gives it a hint of sweetness. Not sweet, but just a hint of sweetness and um, gives it a little vinegar in the background as well. And uh, so I'm going to do that. So I'll take you through that. Now I added to the mix about a half teaspoon of um, salt and just a half teaspoon at this point because for one thing you don't want the beans to uh, be tough. So this is my salsa on my wooden spoon. Just enough. It's going to give it a nice color. I like that little hint of tomato but yet and still it's not a tomato tomatoey soup but it gives it a pretty color and now for the star that's the ketchup so I'm going to give it a good smush of ketchup there's the ketchup which all you need and uh, I'm going to stir that up. I had put in a little pinch of uh, pepperoncinos. I put in some black pepper. Um, like I said, it has a whole onion in. And if later on I think I need a little more, I will certainly add more of that. Um, I think I'm going to add in a little garlic powder. Or actually, I have some real garlic. So I think I'll just add in the garlic. Hold on. You know, guys, I love being in the kitchen with you because it gives me someone to talk to. And when I'm trying to work out a recipe, it actually, <laughs> we can kind of uh, throw suggestions back and forth. So I'm going to put in uh, kind of a heaping teaspoon of garlic, there we go, into the mix. And uh, now it's going to be time to add the liquid. Now, you can certainly add all broth if you want to do broth. You can do uh, water and add um, bouillon to it. I have a little bit of broth that I'm going to use, and then from there, I'm going to add in water. And I'm going to cover it, and I'm going to let this baby cook. I want it to come up to a good bubble. And I'll probably add in a couple of uh, chicken bouillon cubes. I had a little bit of stock, a little bit of turkey stock that I had in the refrigerator from another dish I had done earlier in the week. And uh, so that's in. So now I'm going to add about four cups at least of water and probably more. I'll probably add in about six. Okay, so here goes our water. Let me look at that. You know, I think that's gonna be that's gonna be pretty soupy. The beans are gonna pick up a little bit. I think I'll put in a half cup, another half cup of water. Just uh, or maybe half. Yeah, I'll go ahead and add that in. Now later I can adjust the spices but I want this to cook over the next two hours and I've got it it hasn't come up to temperature just yet to where it starts to boil but I'm going to put the top on it because I don't want to lose any of the liquid 
Now, so my spoon is there. I can put everything away. I'm going to add in some chicken bouillon to the mix. And I'm going to add in about, I'm going to start with a teaspoon. Well, let's say a tablespoon. I'm going to use that same spoon that I had from the garlic. And uh, I'm going to sprinkle that in. I'm going to see what that does for it. You know, if you have to add more, then certainly you'll add more. But for the moment, I think this is good. Once everything starts to boil and bubble, the flavor is going to change. I just don't want to overdo anything. Okay. I don't want to do anything at this point. The good thing about the salsa is that it gives it just a hint of heat. And uh, then with the garlic, the pepper, and the ketchup, everything else is good to go. So, I'll bring you back in about two and a half hours. Good morning. It is seven in the morning. I have this turkey that's thawed, and I'm getting ready to spatchcock it. That means that I'm going to cut the backbone out of this turkey, and then I'm going to lay him out flat so that he doesn't take a long time to cook. And um, I'm, I've got the roaster ready. The oven is getting hot. And uh, for dinner tonight, which I'm taking over to my daughter's, um, turkey is going to be at the top of the list. So let's look at spatchcocking. Now I'm using a sharp, somewhat serrated knife. They call it a boner. And uh, I am cutting right, let me make sure you can see. Let me see if I can turn it. I hope that's better. I can feel where the, the backbone is. Please don't notice the lady. It's kind of like the Wizard of Oz. Uh, you see crazy things, but don't look. So, uh, anyway, I'm trying to find his backbone so I can cut down that backbone. When it's just a chicken, I normally just use scissors. There we go. Just have to hit it right, and what you do, then the backbone will cut right up. And be careful with your fingers because well, that's quite a bit to cut for you, cutting through a little bit of bone. And you can see where we've gotten through that. I'm picking up that wax paper down. We're going to turn it around. And I'm going to start again. Now I'm going to kind of find that spot. I guess you might call it the sweet spot. There we go. And... Uh, I'm going to use this uh, back in my broth. I got the broth, I got the back in all the giblets. So now I'm going to go down here. I'm going to try to go in from here. Now, you know what? Now I realize what was holding me up. You know, when you have turkeys, they always put the, the legs together because they think you're just going to clean it and go with it. Well, we're not going to do that. Nothing's quite that easy. We're going to take those things out, let the legs go, and open up. Now we have to get this out. There we go. I got it. Let's see if I can cut it out. I can feel the end of it. I apologize for the roughness of the cook and uh, not being exactly perfectly dressed today. Not at this moment anyway. It's a little early, so you're seeing me in the rough. And I don't normally let you get there. 
but that's okay. We all have those rough moments. Now, I see it. It's kind of like dissecting, which I've done a lot of back in the day. I'm going to cut this right off. Here we go. That's it. It's going to run. Let's see if we can get this one now. I think we're going to have to wait. He's caught up in the neck, which is right there. And I'm going to take that neck off. And I'm going to save him for the gravy, for the broth as well, which we will use to make gravy. Since we're so close there, I'm just going to cut. I always keep a pair of scissors handy. Now there's our little plastic piece. I can see at this point, you might be able to see, I'm not sure, since I'm kind of working with him. Okay, he's got a, a little device that's down in there. So we'll see if we can get all that cut out. Let's get the knife back down in there. There we go. Not an easy task initially, and you can kind of pull him back a little bit and you feel it pop. You feel that back pop. You see where that piece is. I'm going to give that a cut. There we go. And I may be able to finish this up using my scissors. Let's see. It will let me do that. So at least I can see what I'm doing. Okay, let's put him back down. All right, now there he is. So you can see where that little plastic device is that they put in there. And uh, I will work with that, get that out. And uh, I'm gonna have to break that bone in order to do that, but I don't think I need to do that on camera. I think you can figure that part out. That part's easy. Okay, lots of giblets, got the neck in there, and I'm going to put this on cold water and rinse the neck. Get the neck a good rinse. You know, you have a little bag of the, the organs, so it's going to go in the pot, too. So I'm going to go get the pot, and uh, then we're going to be ready to get him ready for the pan. Okay, he's almost ready. We just have to get him good and seasoned up, okay? Now, I just thought I'd bring you back for just a second. I had to wash my wire cutters because this little device on this particular turkey is so thick. There we go. I think that's what we're going to see. He comes out very easy once you do that. So I'm going to actually throw those back in the water, come over on this side and get the other piece because you don't want to leave any of this in the in the, in the turkey meat, because someone may get that. And I'm using grocery bags to throw away anything turkey related. So I got that bag there just in case I have little bits and pieces like this is some fat I don't think I need. So I'm gonna cut that off and I'm gonna throw that in there. Now, in the broth, fat's okay. We can have the fat there because we're gonna need that in order to, um, in order to develop a good broth and a good gravy. So I'm just gonna take this back because he's pretty long and I'm cutting him in half. He's already been washed. I'm gonna put it into my pot. You may not be able to see my Dutch oven sitting over there, making sure I've got all the little feathers out. 
and uh, sometimes even though they come pretty clean but occasionally you'll see a feather or two and if you do just take the time and pop them out you just kind of put your knife on the feather and pull it out take your time pull him out sometimes he fights you sometimes he wants to be difficult but that happens okay so that little piece is ready to go in now i've got hot soapy water over here a little hotter than usual and it's full of dishwater the reason for that is because i need to be able to wash my hands and i have a towel in there that when i'm finished i could actually throw it away now i'm going to pull my dutch oven up and i'm sitting it there with hopes that you can see it over there. Okay, that's my Dutch oven. That's my trash bag. Now, I'm going to take this turkey by the legs. And I'm going to kind of hold him up, give him a good shake, because I want most of the liquid to make sure that that liquid's out. Then, I'm going to turn him over onto his stomach. And he's not going to be real easy to flip. Okay. Now, what I do is that I can push down on him because I want that breastbone. And there's that little pin that pops up when he's done. I'm taking that out as well. The breast is here. Got a breast there. Got the leg here. Got the leg there. We've got the neck. We'll throw that into, uh, and the neck, I mean the, yeah, the neck almost always has a few little feathers that have hung around. So you just have to uh, work with them and kind of go over and make sure all the little feathers are out. And uh, the feathers at the neck are tough. So uh, they're not always that easy and they're pretty big. So they're a little easier than anywhere else at all to get out. Okay, neck, ready. Okay. Everything's in there. I'm gonna open the giblet bag, get them rinsed. And one well, off. We really don't eat them just as they are, but they do add flavor to your gravy. And then, that's the heart. Open that bag up so you can get the heart and give him a good rinse and put it in. Okay. So, this is ready to go on the stove. I want to bring it to a boil. So, I've got it on high. And I've turned that on so it can go. Now, let's look at our turkey. We're ready to talk turkey. Let's get everything out of the way. Get it into the bag. I kind of like to clean up a little bit before we really talk turkey. Turkey things that I'm just gonna put in this bag, and since trash is collected today, I'll take it out so we can go out because you know, meat after a while doesn't smell very good in your trash can, so we'll take care of that. All right, let's work with our bird. The first thing we're gonna do is to spice him up. The first thing I'm going to do is to add, I'm going to start with a cap full of vegetable oil. Pour that all over. It looks like I'm going to need two. And I have wax paper down because I do have a cloth underneath. And then I'm going to 
Start with some salt, because after all, turkeys don't come salted. And you want to really give it a really good layer of salt. And I'm leaving that there because eventually it's going to have to be wiped off. Next, I'm going to go with some go in with some pepper. Got salt, got pepper. Then I'm going to even sprinkle a little bit of my favorite. You know what that is. Pepperoncino. Give it a little along the way, not for the spice, but for the flavor. And I'm going to rub all of this in really, really, really good. I'm also going to add some paprika. And my paprika, the little cap broke, so I'm going to have to be real careful and just kind of sprinkle a little bit because I want it to be nice and pretty when it comes out. I want that color to be on point. Okay, got paprika. We need some onion powder. And I'm keeping everything right here because we're going to need to flip it over and do the other side. And you know, I was so sure. I had plenty of garlic powder that when I was at the store, I didn't pick up an additional container. But you know what? I know I don't have any more. Okay, well, this little fellow is going to have to do without. All right, well, I'm going to go to the Trader Joe's 21 seasoning that has all kinds of good flavors in it. It has uh, onions, spices, pepper, celery seed, cayenne pepper. It's got basil, parsley, marjoram, bay leaf, oregano, thyme, savory, rosemary, cumin, mustard, you name it, it's got it. 21. We're going to give it a good shake. Does that not look good? Okay. Get some back there on that leg. Okay, I'm keeping that right there. Now, clean hands. Let's go in and give him just a good massage. Make sure you get inside those wings. Get in his, what I call, in the pits. In his little pits. Make sure he's all done. Get him good and slathered. All right, you know what it's time to do. We've got to turn him over, and we've got to do this again. All right, let's give him a flip. Be careful with the legs, because remember, they're a little loose, because they don't have the back holding them. So i got the wax paper. I'm just kind of breaking bones as I go, because the flatter it lays, the better. Okay. Now, I'm going to put some more, i got to wash my hands, put some more oil on him. And, let's season up the inside. Alright, let's get a cap full. Actually, for this portion, I think a cap may make it. No, we need some more because we do have the other side of those legs that we need to make sure that we take care of. And you know, the breast tends to be a little dry, so make sure that you uh, oil him very well. All right, oil in place. Got it there, got it there. Okay, let's start the seasoning all over again. Even get his little flap. And uh, I mean, wash hands again. This is a messy job. Now, I did not have any rubber gloves just for the turkey today. 
So um, this is just normal day of cooking. Normally at Thanksgiving, I do that. So I'm starting again with the salt. Okay, might look like a lot, but this is kosher salt. Since I have the 21 seasonings right in next to the salt, I'm going to put those down. Good, 21 seasonings. Be, be sure to give the breast a really good uh, dose. Okay, let's get the, get the onion powder handy. Good dose. Be sure to get those legs. You know, there's the wings. And of course the breast. I've got pepper. Every bottle is going to have to be wiped down with a soapy towel. Just because, just in case. You know, it may be that it's not a problem, but it is a problem of sorts. And Let's get a little more pepperoncino, just a little, give them a little sprinkle here and there, and some paprika. You'll be amazed, spatchcocking this turkey is going to cut the time, the cooking time, in half, if not more. You'll find that your turkey will be ready, you know, at 100, about 165. I like it more, and I, do, I take it out at about 160, 65, between 165 and 70, and then I tin it and let it uh, finish because it still has residual heat that it's going to to do. So move everything so everything is well seasoned. Don't forget about the wings on the other side, on the little joints, everything. Everything needs to be well seasoned. There's our legs. Okay, he is ready to get into the roaster. Let me wash my hands. going to clean up for just a moment and then we'll be ready to move on. My roasting pan is sitting here and uh, I'm going to put in about a cap full of oil in the bottom, just a cap, not even a full cap, maybe about a half and just kind of give it a little, little oiling just for the sake of the pan, that's for the pan. And I'm going to take a paper towel and rub it down real good. Even though I'm also going to put some foil in there. I have the rack. That's my rack that goes in. I don't know if I can get the rack in here or where it is. There he is. He went in. Wasn't quite sure. It didn't fit. All right. So I'm going to see if I can balance this momentarily right here. Now, what I want to do is to be able to transfer this turkey right into this pan. We're going to have it with the skin side up. So, if it seems like I'm jiggling you, I am a little bit because I'm having to adjust the, the position of the camera a bit. I'm moving those spices out of the way because, you know, all of this is sitting on things that I don't want to touch my top. So I'm going to take this turkey. I'm going to see if I have. First, I'm just, I'm, I'm just trying to get him in the pan. That's all I want to do at this point is to get him in the pan without the pan ended up in the soap. 
and then I'll flip him over in just a little while. So I'm just sitting in there long enough to come back, get the dirty wax paper up, and this dirty towel because they are yucky. I'm getting another trash bag. I'm going to put this in, and the towel is going to go into the washer. But first, I'm going to rinse it in my dishwater. So I'm uh, throwing that over there in the dishwater. Now, what I need to do at this point is put a towel and kind of wipe down the surface so that I'm taking you through the gory details because, you know, everybody has done this. And you have to understand that while turkeys are good, it's a messy job. It's messy initially, but once a turkey gets into the oven, then it's not so messy. And uh, so we are going to keep things clean and uh, take good care of everything. And make sure that no one, including me, is sick from the bacteria from the turkey. Okay, that part's done. I'm going to get a piece of foil. I've got an antibacterial here that I'm going to put down and give it a good wipe. Okay, guys, we are ready to go. Now, I'm just going to toss that there so I can, we can keep it moving. Let's make sure I got you in screen. Okay, now what we're going to do at this point, we're going to flip him over because we want the skin side up. So just get a good hand on him and flip. Now, if you have a large enough sheet pan, I, mine isn't large enough to do it, but this is what I normally do it in. And I'm just turning him over, getting him happy right there, pulling everything where it's supposed to be. There we go. And that's ready. Now I'm going to get see if I have some you can, can put in the bottom of this pan just water if you wanted to. You could add in a box of chicken broth if you wanted to. You could put in uh, a bottle of wine with the chicken broth if you want to. But you do need some cooking liquid in the bottom of the pan. So I'm going to get my cooking liquid and get it ready. My oven is hot. All right, as luck would have it, I have some leftover uh, wine that I'm going to add to the bottom. I'm cut it in just a little. And that's not quite enough, so I'm going to add another. And I'm only going to put in about half a bottle of this because the rest I'm going to put water. Now I'm going to take the wine bottle that I had. I'm going to uh, put water in, cold water in. And there we go. Clean wine bottle, just about. And uh, this is ready to go into the oven. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take some foil. And let's face it, I don't want it to get too brown too fast. I want it to cook. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it cook. Let it cook for about 10 minutes. And I'm going to let it cook on 400 because I'm here at home where I can keep an eye on it. And I'm not really putting it down tight, but I'm just right here where the handles are. That's why I'm attaching on that side. I'm going to come over on this side and attach it over here. Now, can you see that? I've got it. Let me back you up a little bit. Okay, I was trying to keep myself out of there. So I've got it attached here, and I'll scoot it up so you can see, and I have it attached here. So, as you can see, I'm not really trying to totally cover it, but I am trying to protect the skin for the moment. Now, at the end, for about the last 
45 minutes. I'm going to butter it, butter that skin down, and we are going to um, brown up the skin and get it nice and crispy. So this is going into a 400 oven. I'm speculating that it's going to take about two to two and a half hours, but I'll let you know exactly. This particular turkey is a 14 pound turkey. And you just kind of, under normal circumstances, you'd say about 30 minutes per pound. And uh, I'm thinking it won't need that long. It may actually only need, it may need a little more than two and a half hours. But if that's the case, we'll do what we got to do. We're gonna, we've got a thermometer and we'll test till it gets to 165. I'll see you later. It's time to get ready for some dressing. I have cornbread cooking in the oven. I've got the turkey that is just about finishes at 168 degrees. And uh, I'm going to let it just kind of stay in there uh, for a little while longer. I'm going to give it until it gets to about 172, and I think I'll be happy with it. And once it hits that point, I'll turn everything off. So um, I am adding to this skillet I have a little bit of olive oil and I'm going to put in an entire stick of, of well an entire stick of butter and on the second thought I think I'll put a half stick of butter that's where I'll start you know it's always better to start a little less than necessarily more so I'm going to start there and while that's melting I'm going to add in an onion. Some grated onion. I'm going to get my wooden spoon. I'm going to add in about a cup of celery. And a cup of celery. I'm going to salt and pepper this because this is what's going to go in the dressing. So we need some pepper. Make sure we got pepper. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need salt. And this is kosher salt. We need some of those 21 seasonings. I'm just going to take the top off of that. Nope, wrong thing. Well, I need a little time always. Time is good. And here's the 21 seasoning. And guess what? Time is not a part of that mix. Okay. Now, I'm going to turn this down. Let these flavors come together. I'm going to look at the consistency and see if I need to add any more butter because I do want it to be pretty. Uh, rich at this point because once I add it to the add it to the cornbread and the broth then that's when the rubber is going to meet the road so we've got our start here's our onions our celery and the seasonings in this pan now next to where this is uh, cooking, I have my um, giblets and those kind of things that are sizzling away. And I'm going to take a couple of ladles of that broth. I'm going to put in one, then I'm going to put in two. Two ladles. because we're going to need that juice once we start to put the 
the dressing together. And I'm just going to let that cook a few minutes. Then I'll give it a taste, see what it tastes like. At that point, the cornbread should be just about ready to come out. I like to be able to do it while it's hot. And I'm going to do it in a large bowl. I'll add two eggs to it. Is This baby just came out of the oven. The probe is still in it. I'm going to take that out. It's at 172. So I'm going to sit this where I can wash it well. And uh, it will be clean. But as you can see, I've got a really good, can you hear that? Hear that crackle? That's the kind of skin you want. And the bone should move easily. I can get over here without burning myself. Let's see if I can get in here and hold the camera. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Once I got in. Woo! There he goes. He's out. Ah. So I am going to tint this because I don't want it to dry out. And I'm going to baste it and then tint. And it's done. It's ready for dinner. So I'm turning the dials off. And I'm getting ready to bring the cornbread out of the oven. Well, the cornbread is ready. And I'm going to give it a few minutes to uh, cool. I'm going to cut it into small cubes and we're good to go. Sorry about that. There was a big guy yawning. the dressing into this container and I've actually added the last little bit of broth that I had in my little container. I've got a second container here and the only reason I'm adding a little extra juice is because of the fact that it's only 12 noon and it's going to be sitting for a while so I know that this juice is going to be just taken in by the by the cornbread and literally, when I get ready for it to throw this in the oven, I'm not even going to be concerned about how much liquid it has. I'm going to cover it with foil. It'll be ready to go directly into the oven. Both of these are oven safe containers. And um, so I'm getting them ready. I'm going to sit these in the refrigerator since I have time for them to do that. So they're ready. It's just a matter of putting them uh, into the oven. So I'll take these out about 30 minutes before I put them into the oven. It shouldn't take any longer than 15 to 20 minutes for them to get good and hot, the top to get brown, and um, I don't want it uh, dry. So uh, needless to say, there's going to be some, dress some um, gravy to go over this dressing. So I'll bring you back later on and let you know how it all turns out. Hi, guys. We are at the end of the week. And you know what? I started out the week looking like this. And guess what? The way the rotation went in the washer, ah, I ended up looking like this as well and have it on this same shirt. But whatever. It's okay. It's clean. So let's talk about this week. What? a uh, week. I got that turkey done. I got all the bean soup finished and had a wonderful time in my kitchen. You know, Wednesday was wonderful taking dinner over to my daughter and son-in-law's house with the kids. They were tickled. He was tickled because bless his heart, he's been trying to carry the load while my daughter uh, finishes school and she's got a little bit more to go. And so I'm hoping that, um, you know, it may not mean that much at this point and time in their life, but one of these days, I hope that they're able to return the same thing to one of their children. They'll remember. Now, the little things that we do in our home, it's a memory maker. We make memories. And, you know, I can remember so many things that happened right here 
in the kitchen, not necessarily this kitchen, but in my mom's kitchen that I remember today sitting at her kitchen table. I learned how to cook while sitting at her kitchen table doing homework and watching the things that she did. 